Hi again. This, hi again. This is Daniel. Hi again. This is Daniel from the Little Babome. After showing you the last times what the raw sequencing data looks like and how to align it to the genome, today we'll show you how to search the sequencing data for information. Dario showed you in the previous video that we end up with 6 million variants that Bob has compared to the reference cat genome. We're pretty sure that the variant that is responsible for Bob's shortness, her extra digits, or that she doesn't have any teeth, is somewhere in this 6 million. The only and the hard thing that we need to do is to find it. And we can't go through this list by hand because, well, obviously we'd go crazy. But thankfully there are bioinformatics search tools that allow us to filter this list for the kind of information that is relevant to us. We use the software called Platypus to detect all of the variants that Bob has compared to the reference cat genome, which is the genome of another cat called Cinnamon. Now, 6 million sounds like a big number, but this type of variation is completely normal if you compare two individuals of a species like you and me to one another. Since the genome is so large, 3 billion base pairs, 6 million different positions are only 0.2% difference which means that on a DNA level, Bob and any other cat are 99.8% identical. So we have a list of 6 million. What now? First, we wanted to check if we could use this list to verify our previous finding. You might remember that a few months ago we used a targeted approach to test if Bob carries a variant that is known to cause extra digits or polydactyly in Ernest Hemingway's cats. What we found back then is that at a specific position Bob has a C on one copy of a chromosome and a T on the second copy of a chromosome. So now if we look, zoom into the region that we sequenced half a year ago with a different technique, then this is the part highlighted here that we sequenced. And if we zoom in to the specific position where we found the variant, then we see in our whole genome data that half of the reads carry a C at this specific position and the other half carry a T down here. So this is great because it means that we find the same variant months apart using two completely different techniques. Actually, checking this kind of controls is the first thing that us scientists do if we look at experiments, because if we can't trust the controls, why should we believe the rest? With that in mind, we wanted to filter our list in a different way. You might have heard that not all of the genome is the same. On the one hand, we have the genes, or the protein coding genes. The genes are the building blocks of our body. They are the stuff that make your muscles, or that are your hair, or that are the drug receptors in your brain. All of these are made from proteins. The other DNA is the non-coding part of the genome. We're not entirely sure what all of this does, although a lot of it seems to be information on when and where to use the genes. The important thing is that we know that a variant in a gene is much more likely to have an effect on the body than a variant in a non-coding part of the genome. And if we have 6 million positions where Bob has a variant and we don't know where to start looking, well, we might as well start there. So, what happens if we remove all of the non-coding variants? We're left with only 59,000. 59,000. That is a lot better, but it's still a terribly long list. Actually, if we would look at each variant for one minute to see whether it might be disease-causing, and we would work eight hour shifts between Dario, Ushi and me, we'd be looking for four weeks. But we can shorten this list even a little bit more, because there's some variation in the DNA that does not affect the protein that will be made. These are called synonymous variants, and they make up about a third of all of the variation, which means that we're left with only 39,000 variants to consider. Like this, with two steps, we move from 6 million to only 39,000, and that is fantastic. The next thing that we can do is we can cross-check this list of 39,000 variants in genes with the list of genes that we have that we know have something to do with bone growth or osteopetrosis. Since the doctors in our group are specialized on genetic causes for bone disease, we have a very well-curated list that we can check against. 
And we did check if Bob has a variant slash mutation in one of these genes. And well, what I can tell you is that we found a variant that we think is causing Bob's osteopetrosis. And we are very, very, very eager to share this information with you. And we will do so in some different format sometime in the next few weeks. Until then, Ushi and Dario told me to say hi. And if you have any questions or comments, just let us know and we'll get back to you. Obviously, we're really excited to see you next time around. Bis dann und tschüss.